राम कृष्ण हरि पांडो रंग हरि 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 काल वेल नाम उचारित नाही देव सांग याला नाम पाठ
அர்ப்பணம் செய்வனதை செய்தாலும் அவனறிவானவனதை செய்தாலும் அவனறிவானந்த எண்ணத்தின் தரம் கண்டு பலன் தருவார் எவனதை செய்தாலும் அவனறிவானந்த எண்ணத்தின் தரம் கண்டு பலன் தருவார் கண்ண சொன்னதன் கீதையிலேயதை கருத்தில் கொள்வாயுந்தன் வாழ்க்கையிலே கண்ண சொன்னதன் கீதையிலே அதை கருத்தில் கொள்வாயுந்தன் வாழ்க்கையிலே நம் வாழ்க்கையிலே நம் வாழ்க்கையிலே சிவம்சி குல தர்ம ராம சேவா 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 சிவம்சி
we will now have the second part of the video no? about ashram about and the words of uh, mother hamilton on a stack, you must first get it on your head. Then you must climb a ladder. No messy machinery around here. Madhuji and Ramdas supervise. Kana carries a bale of fresh cut grass to the cows. The grass is kept cut by human lawnmowers armed with short sickles. Water is distributed to necessary points by head power, usually a woman's. Some carry a copper pot full and never spill a drop. Carrying water from the well, the last one to have any when we left in May. Here's the well. Note, small bucket used because the water was so low. Water was not exactly comparable with our water, but nobody complained. Swami Krishnananda on his way to morning bath. Charcoal burners carry in the day's work on their heads. The bags weigh 60 to 80 pounds. They carry them perhaps six miles and earn two rupees or 45 cents a day. Lakshmi and her children, Sridhar and sister Shashila. Little one is lost and forlorn, sits and cries. Bigger boy asks him what's wrong, then says, come on, and we'll find your mother. Indian children take wonderful care of little brothers and sisters. Little Vivekananda is having a lovely time in the hot sun until Nemesis in the form of Mother with a cloth appears. Now joy is more restrained. Sridhar and his Aunt Ganga. Possible. And this Sridhar is singing the Ramnam every day morning. Mm. Eh? Morning, morning, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, then. then. Women and children around the ashram. 
the colorful saris worn by a group of women on the village street. Children always have to get into a picture. Tonga, an ancient form of conveyance. Young Muslim girls bring their little brothers and sisters to dinner. The ashram was almost always filled with music of one kind or another. Even at night, the howling of roving jackals and the drums and conches of a nearby temple kept us from being bored. Some wonderful singers and instrumentalists visited and performed, much to our delight. A number of feast days were observed, including Go Puja, or Cow Worship Day, Ram Dass's birthday and Sanyas anniversary, and a three-day visit from the governor of Kerala State. We saw the ceremonies of a young Brahmin boy receiving his sacred thread on his 13th birthday, marking him as a man capable of assuming certain responsibilities. We were invited to a Hindu wedding. We saw poor feeding. A thousand people fed, one meal each day, on three successive days. Woman singer Maturabai and young tabla player Ram Kishore. Wonderfully sweet voice, tremendous range, and an amazing control as most Indian singers have. They are trained in breath and vocal control from childhood. She plays a tambour and uses a clacker with castanets in it for keeping time. Most Indian music has a definite rhythm and sometimes a real hot beat. Note her concentration. She is most devout. And her songs are the typical religious music of India. Here is Maturabai. She comes from Ahmedabad in Sindh country. Go puja or cow worship ceremonies. These include putting round markings of milk on the cows, putting flour and paste on their heads, bowing to them, and garlanding the bulls. Here are buffalo cows in a wallow. Not the cleanest bath, but very cooling. The one drying off has a little white heron in attendance to pick off the flies and insects. Buffaloes have no hair, so they must get into the water frequently to avoid being fried by the hot sun. The governor of Kerala State, Ramakrishna Rao, came for a three-day visit with his aides, an armed guard, and a flag requiring the erection of a pole. Swami Atmananda, who had been in jail with him during the Gandhi days of civil disobedience. 
walks over to inspect the dispensary. The guard of honor is dismissed. A young woman from Saurashtra, Guli Chablani, who became a very dear friend, pays her respect to another woman by taking the dust from her feet. Saraswati, the beautiful wife of the ashram doctor, and the doctor himself, R. Kupaswami. Here they leave their house bound for a gathering. The man always walks ahead, followed by their maid servant, who works from nine to five, six days a week, and is given two meals a day and eight rupees a month about $1.75. The ashram built and operated a school for many years. It was the custom then to give all the children new clothes once a year. The school is now run by the state, but the giving of new cloth is carried on. Here the youngsters march in singing and seat themselves on the platform before Ramdas. Each one comes up for the new clothes and runs off to change. These may be the only new clothes the kids will get all year. sitting on the left and the boys on the right. Prasad, plantains in this case, are distributed to all. boy has just received his sacred thread of the Brahmin caste and is robed in the ceremonial red cloth, indicating he has reached maturity. It's given to all Brahmin boys of the age of 12. Among Indian instruments, the sitar is perhaps the most difficult one to master. Here a master and his pupil practice together. The sitar has 13 strings one of which is used for melody or time, the others, being in two groups of six, are used for chord accompaniment. Note the rapid fingering and use of the melody string. friend also enjoys the music. Grounds are decorated for Swami Ramdas's birthday celebration. 250 guests were at the ashram. As part of the celebration, the poor are fed. Here are some waiting at the gate for their turn to dine. Mm -hmm. 
Note varied quality and quantity of clothes. Now they are trooping in to take their places at the dining table. Here they are seated on the ground. Their dish is a large plantain leaf. Rice is heaped on it and condiments ladled over it. Children get the same portion as adults. Leftovers are wrapped up in a corner of Mama's sari and taken home. Everybody always washes hands before and after eating. A long trough provides facilities. There is always a lot of activity around the grounds on a feast day. Women and children, crows and dogs. Here is some of it. Sadhu leaves. A young sadhu gives us a pronoun. A little girl with a skirt but no blouse. The pandal erected to shelter diners from the hot sun. A little girl carries her littler brother. Blind man led by sun using stick. <laughs> Departure is such sweet sorrow. When guests leave, there's always the bustle of loading the little car and saying farewell with garlanding, giving of gifts, and paying respect to Ram Dass and Krishnabha. A typical leave-taking scene. Swami Hari Harananda comes over. Francis loads the car. How can he get all that baggage in and passengers too? Sri Ramaswamy, the editor of the Ashram magazine, The Vision, joins the group. A young movie producer from Bombay bows at the feet of Swami's Hari Haryananda and Satchidananda. <laughs> Swami Satchidananda comes down the steps to join the group. An old devotee arrives. Papa comes with his retinue. Gifts are exchanged. Yeah. 
departing guests climb into the car. Ram Das and Krishna by Give Farewell Prona. Reverend Mildred Garland's Monaji and bows at her feet. Lakshmi takes a garland and tries to make a hair ornament, but is unsuccessful. Mother Krishnabai then takes it and skillfully forms it into its right shape. Reverend Mildred leaves the guest house. She says au revoir as our picture story ends, wearing her sari and flowers in her hair. And so ended our visit to Anandashram, truly the abode of bliss. And we flew home to America. Never will we forget the loving friendship given freely to us by the many Indians of all castes that we met, and the care and consideration and thoughtfulness lavished on us by Ramdas, Mataji, Satchidananda, and the Ashram people. Satsang, or being in the presence of saintly ones, is like sitting in the warm sun and feeling the heat and light flow into your whole being. Pronouns. How contented we were, no, visiting you free from grumblings and complaints. What a simple living habit we had. How our masters lived in this ashram. With all the limitations, how they were engaged in activities that reach out to many, many deserving segments of the society. These are all the things and much more that touch and kindle in us. We are deeply grateful to Larry and Ketama. Because suddenly, you know, many people, many of us would not have seen the old days in Ashram. We have heard so many things, but we have not seen. So it was really a thought provoking. And also it uh, sends, gives us a message how Papa Mataji in the old days, how they were carrying on with all the activities cheerfully. You know. Compared to that life and now, there is no... Comp we can't make out or you can't Brahman conceive. Birth, yeah. So, we again express our gratitude, especially on this Sanyas day. It is, it is good, Papa prompted them to bring it here and then made it possible for us all to see and at least to go back to the old days of the ashram. So many, so many untold learnings are there from this. The hard-working nature, the simple uh, village people, the children, so many, so many, so many. Hari Om. Now we will uh, 
First we heard uh, Parampuja Papa's words. Yesterday we made an attempt to hear Puja Mataji's words. Now we will hear Puja Swamiji's words. Puja Swamiji, when we think of him, joined this ashram for good on 26th January 1949. Just like uh, we say on the 27th December 1922, when he boarded the train at Mangalore, on five, five o'clock, he bid farewell to the whole, which <coughs> the world to which he belonged. Similarly, on 26th January 1949, Puja Swamiji came and offered his entire thing at the holy feet of Papa Mataji, never looked back. Many people closely associate with many noble ones, but rare are the ones who imbibe and make it a reality in their life. The moment we think about Swamiji, what comes to our mind is the self-effacement. Even when he was totally involved in all activities, nobody will find that he is always busy or he just talks anything about that. We started coming here from 64 onwards. But only after coming here in 89 to spend more time in ashram, we came to know the load of work Swamiji was carrying. But during the previous 25 years, we used to spend some time with Swamiji, of course with Mataji more and then with Swamiji. But we never knew that the load of work was too much for him. That was his uniqueness. Nobody will know that. Meticulous in whatever he does. Excellence in whatever he does. Self-effacement ready to serve everybody. Simple living. If there is another word beyond this, we can... Simplest, okay. A small room in this Ramana building where one or two almiras will be there and a chair and a cot. Hardly any space to move about freely. And common bathroom, common lavatory. There, as, you, as we enter this corridor, we find you know, there were three rooms. First room, second room, third room. Many a time we used to stay in the next second room, next to Swamiji's. Same facility, there is no extra facility. So many, many things, you know. But today, at the same time, he was very deep in his sadhana, very deep, which also nobody knew because his talking was less. Later on only when he wrote, we came to know that it was not that he was observing silence, to him, the all-pervading, indwelling reality was nothing but consciousness. So he was always trying to connect himself with that consciousness. When he sees an object, when he interacts with an object, he was trying to connect this, that everybody is floating in this. Only later on when he wrote, we knew, never he Tom Tom, what he was doing. Today we are going to hear 
the wisdom teachings of Swamiji when Premananda, John, when he came here and he conducted an interview, must have been in late 90s or Swamiji was relatively in good health. Then he shared with us some of the most sublime teachings. Let us hear what Puja Swamiji says. Human birth is the gateway to liberation. Now, having taken birth, we are also endowed with intellect. Using the intellect, we find that there is something higher than what the world can give us. We can get only happiness depending upon certain conditions and that happiness is always followed by sorrow. Now our intellect tells us there must be something more than this, eternal happiness. And we start trying for it. That is the occasion, that is the turning point in our life to return home. Then the efforts to go back home begins. We come in contact with a wise man who knows the truth. He tells us how to go back. He asks us to meditate on our true being or any other method that will lead us to our original home. In that process, we purify ourselves means our mind gets purified, all those desires are dropped off, all the effects of the desires are dropped off, effects of actions are dropped off, and mind becomes perfectly still. When it is perfectly still, we have a glimpse of our true being. And further effort to remain in that state continuously, we get established in that state, which is our real home, our own self. We go back as naked as we started from there. That is the condition to send all that you have earned during your journey. Then we are qualified to enter our home. Can you say something about those tendencies? Tendency means every thought leaves an impression. Every action leaves an impression in our mind. That is why I use the word, we are gathered out of dirt. Every thought, every good thought, every bad thought, every action, good or bad, leaves an impression or layer of dirt in the mind. You can imagine what we had done many years ago suddenly comes to our mind now. It has been there. All those things have to be removed before we can say we have shed all that we have earned during our lifetime. Then only we are, we are absolutely pure, absolutely free or qualified for liberation. For example, when we went to Nityananda's ashram, there are many small caves where you can sit. So the feeling is that it takes many years of hard work to purify the mind. Many years of hard work, definitely. Mm. Well, it depends upon how much we had gathered, how much dirt we had gathered. In some cases, it is not difficult because they are not gathered much of a dirt. When the earth is like a mountain, it takes a longer time. First experience is 
we have identified ourselves with the Atman, which is all pervading. We are not touching the manifestation. Now we are able to see the entire manifestation is also God Himself in different names and forms. So we identify ourselves with the Atman and the universe. Their goal. And they are one with the entire universe. They are one with everybody. Their love flows towards everybody. If you ask, what is devotion? Yeah, uh, what is devotion? <laughs> yeah, our master has taught us devotion is one of the simplest and the safest way to return home. In the beginning, we see the divine or the Supreme Being as separate from us. Because we are not understood that we ourselves are that. We project, think of him as a personality outside us or as a power outside us and give all our love and devotion to him. Then we come to understand that he is seated in our own heart. We are not different from him. And finally, we realize our oneness with him. So are you saying that in the beginning you must surrender to somebody, the teacher, the guru? To somebody, get guidance from the guru. Mm. Who is that guru? One who has become one with the Supreme Being. Because in the West we're a bit nervous to surrender to somebody. Surrender has a different meaning there. The surrender is defeat. If you say, use the word defeat, it is the defeat of the ego in us. The ego disappears. Accepting that I have no power, it is your power that has been working. And I have been claiming wrongly that I am responsible for it. So you're saying that when you deeply surrender to somebody, naturally the ego will fall away. That's right. Somebody means the supreme being. That power he controls the entire universe. To that power we surrender. <coughs> In a very simple manner, no? Swamiji touches the core of our being by using the word real home. He also used the word that we have to go back, we have to become as naked as we were. What all we have put us add on. Then we try to understand that they are nothing but the rights and wrongs, the likes and dislikes, our cravings, our infatuation, our desire, our ambition, our concepts. All these things, you know, somehow we have gathered and we, unless and until we get away from that, we cannot be back to our real home. That word should come back to us often. Whatever sadhana we are doing, it, we should be able to. If we don't bring that into picture while doing sadhana, we will be still groping on the surface. This has to be very, very clear to us. And uh, the word surrender, defeat of the ego, no? erasing, Really, really erasing the sense of me and mine, which is very difficult because we have we have built up a powerful entity called this me and mine in us. And when we hear these words, we appreciate intellectually. <laughs> but the next moment when God puts us on test in all our dealings, this fellow's supremacy still stays with us. 
So when Puja Swamiji used the word defeat, surrender means defeat of the ego. For which we have to remember him always, otherwise how will we? Instead of me and mine, we should know that he who is making the me and mine, me and mine. Me and mine has a role to play, no doubt. It is not that me and mine will go, but it becomes a purified ego. So long as we have got a body, we, we will continue to have this me and mine. But this me and mine and the other me and mine we all have is totally different. Swami Ranganathanji, the small I and the big I. In his commentaries in Vivek Chudamani, he brings out this. There are two eyes in us, you know. EFGHI, that I, not EYE. Shankara compares our life of worldliness to a tree. Its seed is ignorance. The notion that I am the body is the first shoot. Attachment is its fine leaves. Our body is the trunk of this tree. The vital forces within are the branches. Our organs are the twigs. Mm. All our self-centered activities go to fatten this tree of worldliness giving us the fruits of miseries and sufferings. The individual soul is the bird on this tree experiencing everything. Similarly, in Mundakopanishad, we find a picture is a presentation of man's evolution from his life, worldliness, to that of freedom and immortality. There are two birds on the tree. One on the top is sitting in silent majesty and the other, is, other down is pecking sweet and bitter fruits. Every time the lower bird eats a bitter fruit, it receives a shaking, repents. It expectantly looks at the upper bird, sitting majestically and moves a little forward. Mm. We are like the lower bird, fluttering about the sweet and bitter fruits. We flit about from one object to an, our enjoyment to the other and keep experiencing pleasure and pain, often more pain and little pleasure. We keep chasing them in the hope of getting that little bit of pleasure. This goes on for a long time, say for many lives. Puja Swamiji was talking about the purity, you know, dirt, removing the dirt. Mm. Yes. Finally, the lower bird merges in the upper one, realizing that in fact it never existed. All the time what existed was the upper bird only. Similarly, we slowly move towards our higher self. This in brief is the story of man's evolution from his state of creatureliness to that of supreme freedom. Ah, these are all nice too. The Mount Everest of spiritual experience comes by proper discrimination between the self and the non-self. First we have to know what is non-self. One must strive for the discrimination between the individual soul and the eternal soul. Everything comes in a mixed form in our life. We have to sift the real from the unreal. This is the challenge opposed to the human intellect. In each one of us, there is an individual self and the eternal self. The individual self is the I, the eternal self is the witness of this I. These are the appearing self and the real self respectively. There is the I and there is one who witnesses the I. The individual self is the I. The eternal self is the witness of this I.
Papa, when he was talking about the inward journey, makes it very clear. As soon as the mental chanting starts, solution of rape culture. In the spiritual journey, going inward is a must. When we sit silently, we have to be conscious in the first place that the God we seek is in our own heart. Is it appearing? Then mentally repeat his name. Now, which should we should try, you know? Make the mind repeat the name until all its waves cease and it becomes perfectly still. It does not easily become still. We have to continue the repetition of the name mentally with an attitude of self-surrender. Then he says, we try to develop the witness consciousness. It is a state of awareness of the immortal and radiant truth within us. In fact, this awareness itself is God-realization. What Pooja Swamiji talked about the real home, no? you might be remembering the word stillness. To arrive at that stillness, Papa wants us to make use of the chanting. Not oral. This vocal tune chanting should uh, enable us to graduate to a state where mental chanting goes on. Because in mental chanting, we should hear our mental chanting. We become aware of the chanting. We realize the chanting. Then suddenly we, it becomes clear who is realizing, who is talking. So the, the, it, it paves the way for the emergence of this witness consciousness. That is what has been mentioned by the, 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 the small eye and the, and the, and the, and the big eye. So the sense of individuality becomes totally convinced that it owes its origin to the top bird, you know. 
there are two birds so how to reach that here the, the small eye and the little eye this is our real home and at the beginning puja swami ji said the human birth is the gateway for liberation so we should not miss this opportunity in no other species this is this privilege is given initially we have been uh, involved in various activities that keep us away from this real home but every now and then when god makes us to pass through the severest stressful period we all feel you know somehow i have to get peace of mind we say no we may, we may not say silence or stillness but normally we say peace of mind and peace is god peace is stillness peace is serenity that is what he aimed at so the individual self is the i the eternal self is the witness of this i that's why we remember this witness consciousness it is also there not that we have to get it from outside when by his grace we try to practice this uh, mental chanting as much as possible mental chanting then it facilitates for the emergence you know we become aware of the presence of the witness consciousness that moment you know which is swami is that glimpse of the, our original nature and the effort is to get stabilized is that over no put same thing see oh. what is that wonderful reality we see at the same time we also see also our act of seeing we see we see also our act of seeing witness consciousness you know we see and at the same time we see also our act of seeing that is the witnessing self called sakshi this sakshi has entered even in psychology the supreme self is the witness witnessing the individual self we have to discriminate between them and be established in the supreme self it has been beautifully brought out in adi shankara's vivek chudamani and in a simple way papa puts it mental chanting mental chanting will pave the way for becoming aware of the witness consciousness so to today papa chose to reveal made us to think about all these things through swami ji's simple words real home let us not forget this word we have left to the real home and we have forgot the way to reach we remember many years ago when parents had to be shifted to bangalore the brothers boss you know who came from paramagudi brother arranged for him a house in jayanagar so one day evening when we happened to be there he was in an auto came there and he said i have been search in the auto rickshaw for the more than one hour to see my home <laughs> i have not been able to locate my home will you please help me he was staying there but all streets are alike you know especially in a place like jayanagar all li- buildings also look the same for a for a stranger unless we familiar ourselves with that we will have some landmark something like that no number but this man came and told us i have been rounding rounding with the in the auto the auto man got really bored you get down somewhere <laughs> so finally brother said you he took the bike and led him to his own home so we were you know, at that time we were joking but it was a lesson for all of us unless and until we have com- correct idea about our own home 
we will not be, though we started from there we have lost the way exactly it has happened to all of us or many of us or most of us we have left our real home and after seeing so many things got fed up with this and then we want to return to our home but we don't know how to return then we remember this friends experience it can happen yeah and the world we live in is a school in which observation and experience offer us immense possibilities for self improvement so it is not to be just laughed away it was a, there was a learning ah yes we are still searching for our own real home the spiritual perceptors have given us some idea about the uh, home and the path towards it but still it is not very clear to us so these two words of puja swami ji we have to somehow get imprinted in our heart real home trip back to and first thing is human birth is a is a gateway for liberation it is not the gateway for bondage it is a gateway for liberation and second thing is we have come from the real home we should know that first and our our effort should be having played the part we have to return our return to our own home he gave us a role to play outside but we stayed in the outside without bothering about the real home so now uh, through these two words puja swami ji gives us a clear cut direction of what our life should be in this vivek chudamani the second chan second shloka uh, when swami ji said the human birth is a gateway in one shloka he says that durlabham trayame vai tad it is rare of the rarest these three things are rare of the rarest manushyatvam mumukshatvam mahapurusha samshaya only devanugraha pidu hedukam only by devanugraha only by the grace of god we get these three what are the three one is the human birth and second is the desire to go back home no and the third is the company of evolved souls durlabham trayame vai tad devanugraha hetukam manushyatvam mumukshatvam mahapurusha samshaya so whenever we hear puja swami ji's words the shloka also comes to us yes it's a gateway for liberation we should not miss this opportunity that is why papa is arranging programs like this you know not for conducting the program outwardly we say centenary some 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 instrumental cause should be there you know to ignite our aspiration so but the real purpose is that not to be content with the, the programs no it is real it is a it is a push to our real home papa wants every one of us to think about our real home know about our real home from those who have scaled and they have they have returned home and when they when they, we develop just now we saw the video you know last line is abode of bliss that is our real home in a in an understandable way papa puts it as objectless happiness happiness we have some idea you know some mental intellectual idea but it is all attached to it is dependent on or it is based on some object or some situation or some uh, person but here it is objectless happiness happiness that is full the bliss so that is our real home we have to get back to our real home we have been drawn by papa to his the ashram and also to various wisdom teachings and he made us to observe and learn from puja mata ji and puja swami ji we should not miss this opportunity 
But this is the best way of paying our homage to him. He will be very happy, not with anything, you know. They don't want anything. But they will be happy when we have really understood that we are all serious in going back to our real home. So, we on this day, we pray to him intensely to somehow enable us to get fixed in this ideal. Because as soon as the program is over, as soon as we get back to our own places, as soon as we get back to our own activities, field of activities, the intensity which we have developed now, it may not be there. Swamiji says about that. Vasanas, impressions, the leftover, whether it is good or bad, each one leaves a deep dent in our so that occupies our mind and then makes us to forget about this real home and the purpose of our life is a journey to the real home all these things we unknowingly unwittingly forget so let our prayer is papa you made us to know all these things enable us to live up to it make it a reality in our life You have provided everything. Every day you are providing. Not only for the individual existence, but also for reminding us of our ultimate goal to be scaled. Please shower your blessings. You have been showering, but I am not aware of your showering. Make me aware of your showering and grace. So that our... It is not a journey... It is, a, it is an awareness. It is an awareness of, a realization of our original home that becomes a reality in my life. Hari Om. Today also we had a, a wonderful forenoon session, afternoon session with bhajans. Something about our, the old days of, through which so many learnings and also Puja Swamiji's Words of wisdom, something from Swami Ranganathanji's words from Vivek Chudamani. Every day he is giving us, you know, to, for the, when we do the concreting, you know, you must be knowing that. When the mortar, when it is poured, or somebody will be holding something like a, a rod and he will do this, you know, wherever this mortar, so that there is no void there, there is no vacuum there. It get become, otherwise the leak will be there. No? It doesn't get stabilized. So we are hearing so many things. Unless if we do that, outwardly, yes, the mortar is there. And the mortar will become really strong only when the vacuum inside is removed by stirring it. You know? If you watch... That is something for us to remember, learn, you know. Two, three people with a rod, they will be doing this. Sy systematically they will do it so that no, nowhere there, there, anything is left over. So that by the time it gets set, the first two or three hours it gets set. In six hours, you know, more it gets set. And in 24 hours, 80 to 90 percent. In another 21 days, it gets completely 100 percent set. But before the setting process starts, we have to do the stirring and to plug all the all the void there, no vacuum there, gap there. So we have heard so many things. We have been provided with so many things. Unless the stirring goes on, it will not get stabilized in us. So we pray to him now. Not merely you, you, you should be you should leave us by giving all these things. But enable us to do the stirring by ourselves so that it gets stamped, concretized, the real concretized in our heart. Hari Om. Something about uh, the Bhajan Sandhya, uh, or Murthy Ji uh, and party will render. Uh, seven? Seven o'clock he will be here. We request all of you to be here by seven o'clock. It will be a thrilling session. Uh, Chandu can request him, once in a way at least, suppose he is in different languages, 
to say something about the content so that you know we travel with the theme not that every word we should understand something of it uh, so if he just like morning he did like that you know, it was very very in- inspiring for all of us we have heard this brochevar everura but we never knew that it, 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 it was a fervent appeal to the lord without you who is there for me you know? if that w- that comes you know we will be enjoying the whole journey with him so similarly you can request him to give us some uh, you are here <laughs> uh, so that we will be traveling with him and the it will be a wonderful journey for all of us and then anything else to be you know? if anything is to be shared tomorrow we will do it in the morning we will have bhajan you know bhajan the bhakti part has to be definitely nurtured kindled otherwise you know it become dry philosophy you know uh, none of us will be able to travel with that but jnana is necessary papa used to say there there you go serenity trust to serenity ah oh, vanna well i got it control end papa says bhakti is the root jnana vairagya is the trunk trunk jnana is the flower parabhakti is the fruit so first we start with bhakti because your sense of individuality is there and the power is there straight away we cannot jump into the non dual aspect bhakti is the root so we have to recede from the outer attractions vairagya and then jnana so path of knowledge is very much relevant very much important but starts from bhakti ends in para bhakti feeling the whole universe including us pervaded by him only that is the fruit so in quest of god in depth study revealed this you know again we will read steps in the spiritual journey bhakti devotion to god is the root vairagya withdrawal from the outer to the inner is the trunk jnana feeling the presence of the atman within is the flower parabhakti feeling the whole universe including us pervaded by him is the fruit so and bhajans help us to touch and kindle nurture you know develop this devotional aspect to a very great extent surrender aspect is emphasized by every saint in whoever has composed this so today bhajan when we it is not merely the bhajan program that is also necessary accompaniments have their own relevance raga has got its own relevance but the lyrics also you know the sahitya also got its own important role to play so today's bhajan sandhya program we will try to take out the maximum benefit from it hari om om shri ram jai ram jai jai ram o shri ram jai ram jai jai ram o श्री राम 
जय राम जय जय राम ओ श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम राम जय राम जय जय राम ओ श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम ओ श्री राम जय राम 